It's a unique hustle, big, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. It's a unique hustle, nigga. Big shit, big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. Name another podcast like this. Who gonna bring it to the table? Boss talk. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely official Miss Jamaica. How you doing? Uh, I'm awesome. Dana awesome. the host, my dad. Uh, okay. Hey, man, we out here in Las Vegas, man. And, man, people, God been blessing the platform today, man. I got a beautiful, two beautiful women in front of me. You know, this is how I do it. <laughs> you know, when I get down, yeah, yeah, God bless me with two. It's been like that for years. I don't know what it is. Check it, man. <laughs> Check it, man. <laughs> Miss Toy is in the building, man. How you hey, doing? Hey, I'm good. I'm blessed. Thank y'all man. for having me. No, Thoughts thank you off. for coming, man. Yeah, shout out to Payback, too. Say, yeah. man, Payback was like, you got to get on, on this platform, <laughs> man. I was like, really? And then he called it, didn't he? Uh-huh. I couldn't hear because I was over here doing something else, Talking. but I knew. He was trying to make sure that I was here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's going yeah. down, Payback, man. You already know my pedigree. You know what I'm saying? Wow, man. So how you been? I've been blessed. You know what I'm saying? I've been doing lovely radio. Also, I got to, you know, shout y'all out. You know, I have my own radio show. Well, let's talk about it. Let's go back. Let's go. Because I want to know how you ended up in Vegas. So <laughs> let's go back. Let's go back and come let's up. Go, let's go back. Okay. okay let's go back as you want to go. Yeah, I want to well, get back all the way back to when you started, you know, getting into entertainment and all that and where you come from. You're from Chicago. Yeah. Okay. Come on with it. Let me hear all this. All right. Shot town You know what I'm saying? I was born, you know, South Side, Chicago. And my mom moved to Inglewood, California wow. when I was young. You know what I'm saying? So I went to school pretty much in California. You wow. know what I'm saying? I was born and family still there in Chicago and everything, dad and everything. But it's like when she was ready to move, it was that time for me to How see. How old did you say again? About 11. 11. You know? okay. I was a little kid. You know West side? South side? South side. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and we still repping that because that's where my, my you know, my attitude, you know, mm-hmm. right, comes right, from. You know what right. I'm saying? I'm not. I'm West Coast when it comes to the music. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. When it yeah, comes man. to the business, I'm all shot down. You mm. feel me? Because it's real in the field out here, hey. you know, when it comes to being a woman. So, I mean, my first dibble and dab into the music was, you know, I worked with uh, Ronnie DeVoe. Like, okay. that's one of my first songs I did. And um, we did a song called Lifestyle of Rough and Sexy. He's basically doing. You talking about Run the Vote? From a new edition? Yeah, that's what I'm tripping yeah, on. Yeah. How is it working with him? I see she say that just yeah, like it was nothing. I you know mean, what I'm saying? You're going to skate back. I'm going to skate past that. I work but, with Run the Vote. No, look, so I, when you work with Redu- Run the Vote. Listen, listen. When, I, when, when the first people that heard me even spit, a, f- a couple of lines, you know what I'm saying? They was running around trying to find me management. Hey. But did you always know you could spit even as a young child at 11? I always tell, I always say this. My mom told me after I became this toy, I was singing Minnie Ripperton and Shaka Khan before I could talk. I didn't talk to my mom and them, and I could talk until maybe two or three. Like I could talk, but I had my sister running errands. You <laughs> At two me? or three? At two. Like I was one of the baby kids, for real. Like I literally didn't wow. say shit to my mom, but I was singing. So she told wow. me one of those stories. So I felt like after she told me, I was like, dang, no wonder. I always, I'm cleaning up. I got melodies. I can write songs all day. You know what I'm saying? And so when I did the song with Ronnie, it was like, okay, I get in the studio and I hear my voice in the headphones. Hey. I'm like, oh my God, this oh, is going yeah. down. So the producer was like, oh my God, I love your voice. Wow. So just from that inspiration, that one song with him, let me know I, I need to keep going. Wow. You know what I'm saying? So when I got the call from K-Mac from, you know, well, I did Militia as well, but they don't own nothing. We don't own that shit. Okay. okay. That's my, my first step in the, gu- in the game with a gold album. You feel mm-hmm. me? Mm-hmm. With an all male group. So this is why I'm an MC. You feel me? Yeah. This is why I do what I do. Because oh, I already so. went through the process. But when you started <laughs> at a young age, because that's one thing a lot of people, um, they jump into the industry because they're so excited and they have the love for music. Yeah. But they don't know the business side. They don't have yeah. anybody who can put them under their wings and say, okay, don't sign here. Don't do this. This is what you need to do to protect yourself. You need to get a lawyer. You need to da 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 you just so excited when you're nah. jumping in that you just jump in. I wasn't excited about anything. You wasn't? No, I'm not one of those gullible people. That's why people, they don't know that, you know, different things that I do. Mm-hmm. Because I'm not, I've never been starstruck and I'm not a groupie. Mm-hmm. So when I take care of business, I bounce. Because I'm blessed to have a great family to share all my greatness with. And all mm-hmm. my goals and all my stuff with. So I don't go online and be like, this what happened to me, this what happened. Yeah, you're going to see everything. No, if you're a part of my life, you'll know. So starting out, you had all your stuff straight. I was pretty much 
looked at like a female that could, you know, do a lot of things. I had my management. I learned a lot. You know what I'm saying? I That's went through good. a lot of things as a female artist, which made me eliminate people. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And I had a great attorney from the beginning. So that's how I got my... When, when after I did You Can Do It, because I'm on You Can Do It with Ice Cube. I'm right. part owner of this song. That's oh. 20 years old. You know okay. what I'm saying? So that's why I'm saying. Mm -hmm. By the time I got a record deal with Universal, I already was part owner of a hit that was going to be here forever. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So just by that, they was like, oh, she's too bougie. We can't use her. We <laughs> uh, send her back off. Wow. No, like, you know what I'm saying? So I felt that from that. Right. But, but guess what I have to have? I have to be executive producer of this first album. I have to have perks. So when mm -hmm. I sit back and figure out what the fuck they did to me, I won't be in a, the negative. Mm -hmm. I won't be lost. Because my producers was like, hey, you, you, you put this album together. Wow. You know what I'm saying? My manager came in and was like, talking to the label separate. This is disrespect for any woman who brings in men to take care of business in our you know, career. And you go in and say, hey, I need to be executive producer so uh, I can get credits on this album, but you ain't talked to me. And you ain't been to one studio session. You don't write shit. You don't do nothing. So why am I going to play this game with people who are thirsty and starving and can't really win with the artists? Right. So that was my example before the, the internet came. Yeah, because we've met so many female artists who say that, um, and they're, sh they're, they're trying to make it work. They're, some of them have had hits, mm -hmm. but they said it's so hard being in, in the industry as a female, especially because people who um, are above you, who could help you, they're trying to, you know, hit on you. They're not okay. trying to, you know, help That's you. That's going to happen. God bless you with good DNA. You but know you know, but they, they'll be like, okay, in order for you to get this, you got to do this. Okay, so what is it that you need to get? A, a song done? Mm -hmm. Then you need to go be an engineer. You need to go sit down and, and figure out how to work the equipment. Like you need that. to go figure out how to do the registration because they'll get all your money if you don't know how to put your songs in, in, uh, in BMI or ASCAP. So these are things that wasn't taught, but then it was when I paid attention. You know what mm. I'm saying? So then I had to take responsibility for my own life and my own career at the end of the day and be like, hey, they don't owe me nothing. I did an album with Universal. Shit, I got a paid release. There's a lot of artists that's superstars right now. They still stuck. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So God didn't play with me with this music. Wow. And I wasn't mm -hmm. trying to be nobody's superstar to go do this, go do that. I want to do it how I want to. Yeah. Well, uh, let, me, let me break in here. <laughs> Come on. Um, <laughs> break through. You can do it. Let's Put your back into it. it. <laughs> how did? How, okay, so so I know you 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 and him worked this song together. Who Ice Cube? So how did y'all how how did y'all come up with the whole? How did this happen? Give us a break. I love that okay. song, man. I love, it, I love it. it. It's timeless. I love it this too. this this work. Uh, you can listen to it, and every time it's yeah. great. It sounds great. Man. Okay, a backstory. On well, last time record. you performed it, let me stop you in right? Atlanta. Okay. How long the 29th? Oh. It was my show on the 31st. Let's I get it, left. then. I just did. You I just wanted to just, just, just put it. I want to make town. sure they know. Okay. They know. They okay, know. let's talk about it. How did the process okay, go? Um, I met Ice Cube before. I mean, right after I did Burn, mm -hmm. um, we was in the studio, me and Mr. Tan from Baby Boy. That's mm -hmm. one, of my, all, one of my other partners. <laughs> That's one of my favorite movies. <laughs> right? And, and, you know, so me and Mr. Tan, he's also, you know, the actor in the movie uh -huh. as well. So we was like, okay, let's play our music for Cube. You know, it was like one of those West Coast things where we had a meeting with him from Terry Carter, which R.I.P. was one of my good friends. And mm -hmm. he was like, Mr. Toy, I promise, I don't know what I'm going to do with you. I'm going to give you the Q number. I'm going to give you Mac number. So Mac from Inglewood like me, so I pushed that number aside. And I want to go talk to Q. Let's go see what Q talking about. And so we vibed, though. It wasn't no promises made, but it was just that good West Coast going back and forth with the music. Mm -hmm. So um, after I did Burn, um, K-Mac from the Comrades, because he's a West Coast group, he was like, damn, Mr. Toy, I... I got to get your connect. So me and him connect out of all of the people on the West Coast. I'm not giving my number out to everybody. You feel me? But this one rapper that I always see at everything, me and him exchange numbers. And he called me. Toy, Q needs you to get on this hook. And I'm like. Who was he? K-Mac from the okay, Comrades. Okay, Mac. Okay. Yeah, he worked with um, the football league. Okay. So um, he's like, I'm like, where y'all at? He's like, we in Hollywood. I said, all right, well, come get me. <laughs> so then he like, all right, where you at? I'm, I'm in Inglewood. Cause I need to pull up with these niggas. You feel right, me? I need to pull right. up. I'm not walking to no studio. You know what uh -huh. I'm saying by myself. So he like, all right. So I'm like, okay. You know, he come get me and everything. We walk in. It's the studio is dumped. There's so many people in there. I'm just like, whatever. Cause I block people out anyway and go do my job. And so Cube was like, yeah. Um, you know, this this is what we doing. And I was like, all right. Hit the blunt. 
went in the booth, did the shit, and I was ready to go. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't really like hanging. Mm-hmm. I don't know these people. I know Cube. I know a couple of people. But the producer actually was standing. You said you say that so fast. Went in the booth, made it happen. Yeah, how how fast? Went, you like I that? Went, yeah. you, I, oh, Is you, it one take? Oh, yeah. I'm, one take. I'm serious about this. Okay. I'm serious I'm about this voice. Q just... was like, I like your voice. That's dope. Because, <laughs> <laughs> you know, these lines is going back and forth with a male. And male and female on the track just automatically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They right. both got dope voices. It's no way you can go wrong. And the wrong. chemistry. The chemistry it's has to be no there, way. too. Yeah. It's no way you can go wrong with something that's... The track is so full of positive energy. You know but, what I'm saying? Okay, but when you're working with somebody, does how much does the chemistry have to do? Even when the voices are great... Do you have to have a vibe with a person to be able to work with them? Yeah, I mean, when I vibed out with him a couple of years before that, I got my feel already. Okay. And I already knew. I was like, all right, we're going to go in the studio. And, you know, I was invited on an incredible song. A couple of weeks later, I heard it was the single. You know uh-huh. what I'm saying? So I already was in contact with my attorney and things like, you know, they spell my name wrong. Like you say, what I go through, they spell it M-I-S-S. Right. They had to get that shit right. You know what I'm saying? But who am I? They gonna spell it wrong right now. You feel me? <laughs> yeah, like, what is this bitch keep telling us to do stuff? I want y'all to get my name right, right because then they wrong. Know it right. They thought I was Lil' Kim. Right. You know what I'm saying? They ain't give me no credit. You feel me? On wow. the smoke, the niggas tried to be dirty back me and say I was gossiping. So this is a lot of shit that somebody have to go through when you in the business and you on incredible. When you say song. somebody or it's just females have to go through this stuff. No, um, males go through it too. Okay. Males get accused of a lot of shit too. Especially okay. on the road. We're not going to act like women are always the ones. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm just a few that don't care about how y'all perceive me after I do what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? To ignore you. Because now I'm going to go against the grain. Every time you ask me to do something a certain way, I'm going to kind of go against the grain a little bit. Because I know somebody got an agenda. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> you always hear about the females. Maybe because the females are the ones who are always complaining and saying you know stuff like that about the industry. We cost a lot of money. Now, if you invest in your own money to keep yourself fly, mm-hmm. then it don't take them all day to go take care of business for you. Mm-hmm. You'll have more work done if mm-hmm. you came halfway prepared as women. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Don't go to your event and then you need everything done. Your hair washed. You need full makeup. You need somebody to dress you. You got to play a position in your business. This is my business, so I have to make sure I look good before somebody else try to think they can make me look good. And you are all around artists. Can you talk about um, being a female in an industry and some females, what they need to do is know how to do and be the engineer, know how to do this. Now, how many things in this industry do you know how to do? Okay, well, first of all, I learned how to write, mm-hmm. be a writer, and learn how to own it. Um, by uh, registering my music when I became an artist. Mm-hmm. Um, I signed up with BMI long before. Somebody was like, you get a hit, you're going to make money for the rest of your life. That's all somebody had to tell me one time. And I believed it. Um, that's the most honest shit that somebody ever told me in this business. Mm. And it was true. Right? So when I first started getting my first checks from You Can Do It, they were small. But even my mom didn't understand that I'm, I can get paid for this and I'm not working for people. I done did this job and did that. I shit trade i got a trade you know what i'm saying i'm a licensed massage therapist i know how to do some shit you feel me because even my mom is very independent with all of these kids you that's know what where, I'm saying? that's where you got but it from of course so, <laughs> and my dad is a poet oh, so <laughs> that's where the music part that's came the, from yeah the writing. He, he writes poetry wow and books and stuff so it's like um i needed something else because i'm just determined if i'm sitting still too long i get worried busy you know if I, so you can you can engineer you can can you can you make beats can you do um, I'm produce? not well can see me when that? I make beats because I'm I am a part of the producing you know okay. what I'm saying when I come up with the song first and the producer has to go behind me and make the beat I make that track oh okay. so yeah we are we producing around <laughs> I produce I produce whole albums okay, you know what okay. I mean? okay. I'm just I, I'm just the writer on all of the projects okay. but as far as what I want to do how I want to do it um, my producers are phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Wow. I love that. I love you that. um you you absolutely wonderfully amazing. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Let's get to it, man. You know, just to be able to go into those settings with those males because I've yeah. dealt with a, you could be a mentor to so many different young ladies. And I yeah. I'm talking about that. that I know. Yeah, I ain't yeah. talking about what you know. Hell, you Some doing them you already? Send them your we way because to, I can't help them. them. But, but I hear stories, man. I could I give you so many different stories that we hear mm-hmm. from these young females. And they're talented. And they're but talented, they're but they, they go into these situations and they don't know how to handle themselves. I even had an artist on my label, female artist, reggae artist, and she disappointed the shit out of me because wow. I I was sitting there with my first meeting with her. I told her, listen, 
This is my computer. We at home. We could do as many songs as we want to do, right? But I don't want to sit here and do this shit for you. I just want you to learn how to do it so you can be a boss. So when you leave this motherfucker, you can do it by yourself. Hey. And what did she do? She just started going live on me. Miss Toy, yay. Miss Toy, fuck up, that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. I was like, you know what? Well, you gave her some when real. You, listen, people want it overnight. I can't give it to you overnight. I, if I'm, you come in my studio, I got to pick you up. It's my assistant. She getting off work. We work. We work, working women. We take care right. of bills. We got to pick you up. We don't got kids over here. I got to pick you up. I got to feed you. Got to smoke weed with you and write the songs for you. My producers already gave us the track. What the mm -hmm. fuck are you doing? Yeah. When you try to tell me something and I tell you the real and it hurts your feelings, when I absolutely told you in the beginning, I am not a worker. Mm. I am a boss and I will show you how to do this before I do this shit for you every day. Mm. I don't know how I'm going to feel next week wow. doing this shit for you wow. if you're not contributing. You don't contribute for a long time and then you blame somebody else. That's going to be your pattern in this business. Right, right. So your pattern can go on past me. You can tell everybody what you want. But the next person you fuck with, I bet you you do the same thing to them. Exactly. So 10 people later after me, that's what's been happening to her. Mm -hmm. And I still got the 20 songs I wrote. Mm -hmm. wow. mm -hmm. So let's play, you know, for real in this game. Like the labels play in the game, but are the artists are showing up on time yeah right. are the artists actually contributing to their it's career more to it, right? by writing the music that needs to be heard on the radio instead of just ratchet music they think everybody want to hear you know what but I'm the saying? blessing part of it to me is the fact that you learned this about the person early on in the oh, game oh yeah without. before i even released music on my yeah, label i had my exactly. albums ready so guess what miss toy been dropping see i had a series and it's still available everywhere y'all i am a warrior so when I got my own label, I said, you know what? This is my whole thing. So now my whole theme, I have a, a warrior movement that been going on since 2014. I put out two albums in one year on my wow. label Wow! after people disrespected me. Wow. And I've been going ever since. So, I, I mean, I got a slew of music. They don't even know what I, all I got yet. You know what I'm saying? Until mm -hmm. they catch up. But I'm not going to wait for nobody to catch up. They still listening to You Can Do It and mm -hmm. pay me. So I still can invest in myself. Exactly. And show up, you know? Exactly. Let me ask you, are you going to tell me how you uh, ended up in Las Vegas ever? And are you going to tell me <laughs> anything about uh, basically, uh, was it a situation in California, I'll, I'll go back and I'm forward to that. But I, I want to ask Cali, you this. Man. When you was in Cali, was there some opportunity that opened up to you that you like, dang, I wish I'd have took that opportunity? Uh, or I could have worked with this person, but I went this way and this happened? No, not really, because I feel like the people I work with, like I work with Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. Oh. I work with George Clinton. Drop it. I, work, I just worked with Dalvin out here and did a video with him from Jodeci. Drop it. Who the hell can work with somebody in yeah, Y'all don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Yeah, y'all been do this listening to this. It's going down. Who the fuck can do this? Uh, that, just, that's just, dope. Just, I mean, and I ended up out here because I wanted my studio at home. I have lovely radio where I, I've had Carl Thomas on my wow. show. I've had, you know what I'm saying, some great entrepreneurs. So lovely radio. What it was? Where's that? Uh, is it on the radio? Spreaker.com. Yeah, MissToyMusic.com. You can always catch me every Thursday, oh, what, a Thursday at 7 what time? p.m. Pacific okay. Standard Time. Um, I'm just there dropping game and jewels to the artists that love so, bugging so, me in my DM. Talking about listen to this, send it to the goddamn show. It might be heard. I don't, I don't listen to that shit in my DM. I don't know what y'all. Me. No, that's dope though that they have an outlet that they can reach out to or someone's experience and don't mind giving them exactly. giving them a, a way out or giving them some uh, uh, just some advice on 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 how how you can do it how you can yeah. be successful well, that's what we, it's called we you can do it on. right but people don't Man, always and and like and what call again, girl, that you, you can do about. it she don't like to she didn't want the She's East believing. Like, I'm sorry. I didn't oh. mean to disrespect you. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank yeah, you so yeah. much. I'm so sorry. Thank you. Yeah, but, but, Thank you. Yeah, but I will. You know what I'm saying? Was she Jamaican? No, I'm just kidding. No. No. <laughs> Look, no. no. <laughs> And my, my Jamaican friend over there. So. Oh, man. So, 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 oh, you know, I just say when you came to Vegas, you know, you come up here, you own the crap table most of the time. You're out here with all these. It's a lot of women out here, ladies of the night. I've seen them. I've been coming out here for years. I used to live out here. But I'm just going to be honest with you. How did you adapt in Las Vegas living here? Because living here and visiting is two different things. Mm -hmm. See, y'all telling all my motherfucking business. They don't even know I live here. They know my studio is here and I got the label here. I don't tell Y'all motherfuckers where I lay my head now. <laughs> shit, I'm from LA. You know, don't tell me all that you shit. Know. But I just wanted to have multiple places too. You know yeah. what I'm saying? To to be able to do what I do in my environment. Before 
I came out this way um, before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, Mike City, who produced Sunshine Anderson, Carl Thomas, Brandy, yeah. you know, long history. And he also was a producer on my album when I was on Universal. Okay. He did the song Work a Twist with me and uh, E-40 and, a, you know, another joint. But he wanted to get together and put an album together. Okay. And said, you know, let's put some music in the library. Let's do a clean version. Let's do a dirty version. Let's do a instrumental and just put it in the library so we can sync up on some of these movies and wow. commercials and stuff. So I'm like, I already know um, it's January. You know, I'm I'm ready to move. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm just, you know, taking care of a few things. And wow. so when he gave me this opportunity now in the midst of me doing all the things that I have to do before I leave. Now I'm about to do a whole new album. Wow. So, I'm, you know, we rolling, doing everything we got to do. I'm in my phone, listening to the songs in the car, writing, you know. And so City said, yeah, so I want to do this album in two days. I want to have, you know, everything done and turned in so I can put all the stuff in the system so that when the next drop come, we can have the music already in there. Wow. I'm like, no problem, City. So I get to work, work. Yeah. So when it's the first session, you know, I do, I think, eight songs. Wow. I do um, three of the songs that first night, and then I finish the rest of them in the second section. City like, man, this is crazy. You know what I'm saying? We yeah. got everything yeah, turned in. It. And then before that, another producer of mine, we have a song that we did, and we do the same thing. Mm. It makes it on All American. Wow. You know? And so I'm like, this is the top number one you know, show in the country at the time, you know? And I'm like, hey, All American, I need to really put some stuff mm. in this album. I know we're going to get picked up. So no sooner than we dropped that album, Woke, mm. wow. Hulu, another track from Mike wow. City album. You know what I'm saying? So my shit is in movies where everybody on stage is trying to mess around and play these games. I'm in these movies. Yes. Awesome. Um, my producers is making shit happen. Awesome. We can see, you know. Mm -hmm. So this time it's like now I, I wasn't at my studio yet. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So I had to go to Mike City studio, get in the studio, drop those songs. So my thing was in the next five or six months, I need to be at home in my own studio so once he asks me this again or any of my other producers i'll be ready you ready, know what i'm saying right, so i'm right. calling around everywhere i'm like so i need to get my studio what i need i need it you know what i'm saying so i get everything together so now i've been dropped all kinds of songs I dropped about 40 songs last year mm. wow um other albums singles features and everything so this year city like you know what he just called me the other day Shit, it was last month <laughs> it's mm. other day to me because it was the end of the month and he was like let's do some more Wow. So I just finished a new album called, you know, HBIC, which means HBIC. Head, mm -hmm. Boss in Charge, hey. work. And um, that seven songs going to come out September 10th. Wow. wow. That's, that's, that's some real Have boss you, talk, right? I know, because when you said boss in charge, <laughs> boss, boss in charge, I'm talking yeah, about boss. Yeah. <laughs> we, need to, we might need to put it on the hook somewhere. <laughs> Introduction. That, that, I already thought about it. I'm going to make y'all a song, too. Man. Oh, wow. That'd, That'd be so dope. It. Payback should have told y'all. Say, man. Like, you you about say, it. man. I'm, I'm already on it. Because that, that, the person that you heard on there, that's EXO, Exo. Music, she's out of Dallas, but she's so Absolutely. dope. Like, lyric-wise? Oh, no. Y'all keep her, too. You just no, no. We go have you. Too. No, we got, no, we got a few. We, we, got, we, got, we, got, we got people that, well, my boy exactly. came from Florida and he hit us like oh, that. Yeah, that was some boss talk. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, 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 he was born in Florida, right, but right. he lived in Atlanta. Okay. So we got some songs. Okay, man. exactly. You know, we yeah, just, our lovely radio got a couple of joints too. You know? <laughs> oh, yeah. So you got to have, you got to have a talk. I need that. I got a theme song. Man, so. I'm coming to see you. I'm going to bless you too. You ain't going to just bless me. Oh, okay. Believe that. I'm coming at you. You know, that's the way we get out. some incredible people that we could talk about. Man. Our show and um, just some of the stuff that y'all learn. Like, I know y'all get yeah. a lot of emails and, and feedback. Mm -hmm. Yes, from some of stuff. I know you're gonna get some feedback from me because oh, they don't yeah. get to hear from me often. So, man, right. I just, I, I and we just you, started man. doing this in January. Six months, when, man. Stop playing, man. When people look at what we do and how the quality and everything, they're like, nah, y'all really been doing this, Jesse? <laughs> and we've been dropping. We have over 200 episodes, yeah, from January. That's a lot of work. No, and, that's work. And let me tell you. You know how many he has that he hasn't released yet? He's still working Stop right? Stop but don't put Man. that out there. See? You know what I'm saying? Some of them might not come out. They looking for their interviews. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> they <laughs> no, I like them, man. I, I, get, I mean, I love them, actually. I, yeah. I'm, we do good work. I think, like, talking to people like you, they, you know, it, it's just, I just don't want to, um, I want them to think I, I'm not going to put this stuff out. No, we going to put it out. We no, gonna that's content, y'all. Check this out. Yeah. Yeah. You got content later. You but never I'm know romantic. might drop on the right day. You know? I'm kind of romantic with it. I ain't going to lie. I like to put it out. You know, I, I like to put it out when I want to put it out. Like, Let them put it out when they want to put it out. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. I love, I, I love all the people. Don't look up and see yourself and be like, 
right. That's me. It's the right time. But so Vegas life is it fast as people think it is? Like just being out here all the time, frequent in the city. Is this gonna be on? They gonna hear this right? I don't fuck with these people. <laughs> I, I don't. I'm from LA, Chicago. Like I told you, I drive to LA and go kick it with my people. Wow, mm -hmm. it's too hot. I'm in the AC. It is hot I'm out here. Yeah. I came here to work. I came wow. here to work. It I got a hot. godparent here, payback here. Um, we did a couple of moves and shit. That's when they gonna see me doing stuff. I just look at this like an opportunity to write without no distractions. I got it. Work I with no it. distractions. Be at peace. Cook. Chill. Mm -hmm. Look. Be in my theater. Like chill and be a person because at all of these years of hustling or yeah. working and doing all of this for other people, I don't have to do that no more. And it's wow. not far from home. Oh no, shit, I just It's left. right up the street. Like, I just came from Atlanta and I just came from LA, literally, mm -hmm. like days ago, Monday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, wow. I, I make a move. That's wow. why I have Go Entertainment. It's GO, getting opportunities, giving opportunities. Wow. That's my label. I like that. Um, I go, I stay on the go. I'm always doing something like my new single, Always Into Something, featuring Jackie Bad. I'm shooting my video here um, on the 21st of this month. So. Wow. Because you always into something. I'm always in. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Savvy ass. <laughs> always in the song. But the name Miss Toy, where's is that always been your name, Miss Toy? Or did you start out with a you know a lot of people change their name this is over funny. the years? My name is okay, when I was little, my mom didn't confuse me. I thought my name was Toy, T O I, right? It is. But I have Keon attached to it. So Ooh, when I was beautiful. 13, I was like, lady, who, who the hell is this? I've been telling everybody my name. <laughs> so, <laughs> Toy Keon, and I said, okay, I love it. Let me let me make up a, a signature. So in, in high school, after I got my name, I, I had my little doctor's little, I have a little superstar signature before I was a oh, superstar. Oh, the doctor's scribble? The scribble. The scribble. I, had, <laughs> I had a whole scribble in, in high school. Uh -huh. Not even knowing I was gonna be a, somebody, a celebrity, I don't even care about that, uh -huh. but I already was practicing. Uh -huh. But Miss Toy came from, you know, uh, me and Mr. Tan, cause Mr. Tan, he wanted this name, his name is Olan, but he was like Tangerine or something was going on with his name, Tan. And so I'm, they looking at me like when I'm gonna be, I'm not gonna be nobody else but Miss Toy. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. I can't be nobody else in this rap shit. I'm spitting some real rap shit. And when I finish doing that shit, I'm going to talk some real mm -hmm, rap shit. Mm -hmm. So I can't have no made up name. Mm -hmm. I like the Miss Toy. I'm just going to sign that Toy Keon on them checks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. And that Miss Toy is just what it is. And I love that because a lot of women were like, you know what? Your name, it, it, it represents a lot of respect. And uh, most people probably didn't get it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. In the beginning, like, I don't want respect just when y'all knew I blew up. I want it. Throughout my whole life, I want my flowers all the way through. Wow. I like that. My grandmother is 92 years old. Mm, and wow. you still have her here. I You're have blessed. her here, and I just seen her in Atlanta. You, were, you are blessed. So when I tell you I have a huge following and family already, Support. besides the music people, right. I already had that. So a lot of people distance from their families. They don't know their family. They don't mm -hmm. know where they come from. Mm -hmm. They don't know how precious having your elders and People give you jewels along the way. I wasn't perfect. Shit, I got expelled from school. I dropped, you know what I'm saying? I knocked some people out. This and yeah, stuff yeah. that I ain't had no Straight business. Straight gangster. But yeah, <laughs> how you know me? You know me? You know me? Do you know me? Oh, no, no, I know you get to it, you know? But I mean, I, I wanted to change because I wanted to make my mom happy. I wanted her conversation about me to be different. Mm -hmm. You know, it was always, what's Toy doing? What's she been doing? What badass Toy doing now? Mm -hmm. You know, and it was just kind of like, you know You what? got siblings? Yes. So how many, are you the youngest I'm, one? I'm the second oldest of six, but my dad also has three other daughters. So, so your mama gave birth to six kids? My mom gave birth to four. To four. And uh, I got siblings that came with my pops that she oh, married. Oh, I thought and it was then my daddy was to to uh, shout out to a Pisces and he got three Let's other daughters. Old. Now we can start the video. Yeah. So, <laughs> you can start the video now. <laughs> Let me ask you this, do you, um, when, when the music changed, cause you've seen it, you was in it when it was, just the CDs and, you know, and it transformed into the digital world, you know, and streaming became a thing, you know, ringtone before that. How did you adjust and how do you like where it's at? I adjusted by um, getting consultation on how to be an engineer because okay. everybody's still going to make money recording. And though I wasn't recording other people for money, I started to learn how to do it for myself. Mm -hmm. And so when that transition happened, I had people around me that wasn't believing into the new system and plus already was getting checks. They don't, they just amateur rappers. They don't okay. know what the fuck going on. So it, it burned a lot of bridges because new shit hurts people. They don't want change. 
But it creates opportunity but at the same time. I am very optimistic about things that's happening, especially if I'm aware of it. Like my mom used to work for AT and T, SBC, all of you know what I'm saying, Pacific Bell. Every transition the phone company did, my mom worked for. Her. She was a mm-hmm. manager. So technology always been a part of my family. Wow. So yeah. so you did adjust and you adjusted well. I mean, are you on Instagram and all that doing yeah, your thing? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Are you are you are you stay, are you engaged when your last post? Um, uh, I don't have to post as much, you know. Um, I have a squad that keep me so full of every, everywhere and everywhere that they think those is my pages. That's, that's so I'm kind of Hollywood good. when that's, it comes that's to the same thing. I, I, like I just it. went that's live earlier before I came here. That's no. why I so they saw me. You know what I'm saying? They yeah. saw me on live earlier because when I'm about to do something, I kind of get more friendly mm-hmm. with Instagram and and Facebook. Like yes. my Facebook music page, you know finally catching up on some numbers where I can get Good. paid. And those are things that matter to me. Yeah. If I'm on there and I'm able to monetize mm-hmm. because I own my music, exactly. then that's why the fuck I'm going in. That's why, <laughs> I, that's why I was asking about it. Hell before. yeah. <laughs> you my nigga. Because you, you got to get on there. I mean, you know, yeah. there's so many opportunities in that as well. Oh, yeah. We just and have to be matters. privy of it. Life you know what I mean? They want to see you. They want to know what's going on. They going to see me. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? That's why I say, you know, and then you know that they going to see you. But you know what I love about the live nowadays? Because for me, personally, Person, what kills my relationship with any artist is that I love your music and I listen to it like crazy, but when I meet you, your attitude sucks. Mm, yeah. Not and all of a sudden, no, not you. No, I, I love, love I miss yeah. people like that too. All of a sudden, I don't I don't want to listen to you anymore. I don't want to yeah. deal with you. I'm like, why are you even in this business? You know you have to deal yeah. with your fans. But I love life because and you can tell the ones who are like that because they don't hardly go on live. Mm-hmm. Because you can't hide that personality mm-hmm. online. Yeah, you can't. But if you dope like yourself yeah. and me <laughs> See. and you, you can go on live, yeah. you can hang out, you know, yeah. you can have fun because you smile a lot. People love you. You love God. Yeah. All that good stuff. All you know what I'm saying? They want to see beauty. There you yeah. go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. See all the way, like, I'm goofy, so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Goofy. They going to see me smoking weed and all kind of shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't give a shit. So top three artists of all times, dead, dead or alive. alive. Any genre? Nah. Number I'm, one. Top three um, artists. We got to have them. I you got to tell. Prince, I fuck Prince? with Tupac. Damn, that quick. And, I've, uh, and I, Nipsey now. Cause wow. Because that, that business sense that he did, you know, um, wow. it's so real to me. So, so you Payback did you? said um, Prince as well, but he did Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. Then Prince. And who was his third again? You said Tupac. Yeah. yeah. Number That's one. I love her. I love okay, her. Okay, why? I met him. He was getting undressed. I knew you was Yeah, I knew it. Yeah, I, knew I seen it. him in person before he died, and I told him I was coming. And he was like, I'm going to look out for you. But then he died. They let they took him away. Wow. So I started working harder. Every producer I work with, damn near work with Tupac. And they was like, damn, fuck, you right? Like, you just knock out shit like Tupac. So wow. I love him. I, you know, I hate to use that reference, but I really respect how he kind of raised me as far as I had sounds in my car around that age when Tupac was real popular. So every line that he was spitting, now that I'm an artist, I feel that. You know what I'm saying? I feel like he trained me. Wow. And no other artist really or producer have trained me. I've worked with Dr. Dre as well, too, though. Wow. You, you, you work with How was that, though? Yeah. No, let, me, let me get it. Yeah, I need to know how, how was no, that. I come for Dr. Dre. Even. I don't care what y'all said. man got a billion dollars right at. He can I'm slap so- your wife right now. Oh, hell no. Okay, I ain't going to hear all that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that nigga going to get it. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. No, no, it, no, it, that's a problem. It was cool. I actually... Um, uh, that song, I just want to fuck. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a girl version, Dr. Dre. Wow. That you have never released that the fans uh, would love to hear. Wow. Me, Yo Yo, uh, True Purse. Um, we're all on that song. And yeah, he put it up. He shelved it. He shelved that bitch. That's why I wasn't his artist. I wasn't ever Ice Cube artist. I wasn't ever Mac 10 artist. Wow. I'm my own. Yeah, because you people. could control your narrative. Absolutely. Yeah. Ain't gonna like tell them that. what they probably do. Hey, the they got you baby mama. Mean? They got baby mamas with artists they fuck with. Like I just I'm just not into that crazy. But why ass they shit. have all the music and shelf it for? What are they gonna do with it? Why not release it? I don't it? know. I don't know. Shit. Maybe his ex wife might. You know, own that's it later. a that's a Who trip knows? because what you said, you know, they they do have those encounters with the people that they interact with. And when you are stern and you step up and say, Hey, I'm gonna do this business and that's it. They don't want to see you get that bag after that. After <laughs> that rejection, right. you take your ass, your goddamn ass, and that's go somewhere. Else, I'm shit. telling you, I know and what's you going find on. Your own way, so shit. But when you're talented, but, you later. but when yeah. you're talented, you can just keep going and yeah. keep yeah, finding your I, own I was stuff. thankful that I turned down. To, no, no. So yeah. how was it working? Because right. in, 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 we can talk about that. How was it working in the studio with Dre? 
Oh shit, there was a lot of people in there, you know. Um, it's always a lot of people. I like working in chaos a little bit sometimes. Yeah. It kind of makes me, you know, like it drives me to be greater. You know what I'm saying? It's like, who the fuck is in here? Ain't no telling. And I know they don't work like me. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So we get in the booth and, you know, Jay like, yeah, do the line. Like, you know, he, you know, I want to do his producing stuff. And I'm like, okay. Shit. So but he, he, never he put does it out. give pointers. So. Uh-huh. Oh yeah. And, and you know, you will take that shit because at the end of the day, you want your shit to be in pocket. Right. You yeah. want them to love it. You want them to mix it. But if you never put it out, I don't give a shit about that session. Right. I got paid. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's dope that you got to do that. A lot of people would love to be in those Oh, and shoes. to be on the Up and Smoke tour with, you know, everybody was the most, like, rewarding thing of my career. I learned how to be on tour like no other. Like, wow. I literally was on a music boot camp. I didn't have nobody with me. What did Ice Cube say to you that was impactful that you feel like you, you, you took from it? I know you said Tupac said something mm-hmm. to you. But mm-hmm. what did Ice Cube say to you? Anything or what did he do? He could have done said, something. Well, he um, actually showed me some things. You know, um, he had an instant replay machine back then. Uh, it, you could program all your music in it and stuff. So when I got signed to Universal, I was on the Up and Smoke tour. Mm-hmm. So my first investment was an instant replay machine. Wow! So I bought the instant replay machine so my DJ can go find my music. I don't like chaos at the booth. Mm-hmm. You got to do the shit right. And so I took pointers from him, and then when, when the tour was over, he said, "Talk to everybody now." You know what I'm saying? You never know who you're gonna, you never know if you're gonna see anybody again. Yeah. And I think that that was real important because I do work with people. I reach out. You know what I'm saying? And um, I also allow new artists to work with me as well. Wow, that's good. That's so good. Run DeVoe, let's talk about that just for a second. Run mm-hmm. DeVoe. Um, Dance and run the bow, you yeah, know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Run. He used to play cars and dominoes yeah. in my house. <laughs> okay. Ooh, dominoes. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, 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 yeah. never catch me with no <laughs> dominoes. <laughs> but, but run the bow, so you and him, what was it? That, is there anything that sticks out that, because you guys actually, you, you played dominoes yeah. and cards and hung out and whatever. Are you good at dominoes? Well, no, I don't play no, games don't no more. I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm, I'm in, from Texas, man. Listen, I'm, I'm in Vegas and I don't even gamble, so don't ask me. <laughs> Don't ask me so what did he do? What did he do that was that like, stood out? I feel like his natural charisma of you know, even though he was a big star back then, yeah, yeah. he was so humble. He's still a big star. And he's um, he was a big star back then to us. We were yeah, young, yeah, yeah, you know you, yeah. I get it. He I get, is a I see what legend you're now. Correct, right? Um, and so that made me really realize, like, man. I, you know, I really have a good rapport with certain, certain That's people dope. in this business, and they feel comfortable being around me and my family. You know what I'm saying? And so. When we did do the song, because my dude, who I was dating at the time, drove a limo. Okay. So I was in limousines even before I was famous. Wow. I was like in a limo going to the store, to the bank, like wow. just <laughs> regular shit, right? Yeah. So he came home and he was like, I was rapping. I was doing some shit to one Ice Cube Beats, writing. And he was like, damn, babe. You know, I drive for these celebrities. Next time I get somebody in the car, I'm going to tell them about Dope. you. And so it was Ronnie DeVoe's uncle, Brooke Payne. Okay. Mm. So he was my first manager, and that's how I ended up meeting wow. Ronnie. Did you meet uh, Ronnie, Bobby, Ricky, Ricky and, and Mike? Mike. Well, Mike. Did you re- meet all of them? I didn't I didn't meet everybody at the same time. Even when I was, <laughs> you see, I don't hear them. <laughs> when I was on Universal, Michael Bivens had this group called the Transitions. And so they're on my album because of Mike, because he came in my session when I was on Universal and I was in New York. So. It's like powerhouse shit be happening to me. <laughs> Already, man. That's a good thing, though, to be able to meet all of them and, you know, mm-hmm. but yeah. and you still, but, but Ron stands clear because he really, really was, you know, hanging out with you. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. And that song, and why it inspired me is because the lifestyle of the rough and sexy, he was taking a chance on being a rapper, knowing that he already mm-hmm. was in a, R&B group. R&B group. And in yeah. this business, they don't like for you to change. Change. Yeah. So I respected him going against the grain of his group to be a, a rapper because later on, BBD. Came yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I just yeah, feel proud to be hard, a part of him, his struggle of being a rapper to make it to another plateau in his career. I think that's dope. See, I yeah. always feel like God bring people in your life for a reason, for you to learn something from it. People always feel like, oh, I wish I didn't meet that person. I wish, you know, that, that was just a bad no. situation. But it's because you're clouded with anger. You're not seeing the benefit. <laughs> the benefit. The lesson wow. that needs to be learned. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. I know you've worked with a lot of different people. Um, I hear you talking about a lot of males that you've worked with, but you haven't really mentioned a lot of females that you've worked with. But she so mentioned what? yo. Yeah, yo, 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 yo. Yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. yo, yo. Payback actually produced this track. Set it off with me, yo, yo, Sugar T, and um, Silky Fine. Mm. So, and then I have songs with the Five Footers. Okay. And also, I'm about to do a video with Philly's own. Uh, Jackie Bad, she's Reed Dollar's wife. Wow. Um, I fuck with the bosses. Yeah, if, on if boss you don't, talk if you don't own your music, you will not work with me. Wow. Uh-huh. 
So well, why I is have it, a lot why, of females well, well, that If I you don't own. own it, you won't work with you because it's more difficult to make things happen? Well, how am I put it out if you don't own yourself? That's what I'm talking about. I can't put it out. It's my music. I want you to, you know, I want to be able to put it out and, you know, give you some shine and recognition and, and stuff that's going on in hip hop because all people have to do is see you dropping music and see the date it said 2021. Oh, <laughs> really, man. So, so uh, young girl. Um, <laughs> if you could go back to that young girl that was um, just starting just out, starting out. Mm -hmm. yeah, what what would you say to her to get her prepared for what she was about to face as far as coming forward from about 18 or so, 17? I'd be like, do it harder. Then do whatever you was doing to get where you was at. Just go harder. Don't even be scared of nothing. It's nothing to fear. Wow. Wow. Thank you so much. I love y'all. Man, you, you. Cool. stop. Don't try to take my line. I love y'all. No, I love no, to be able to chop hey, it up. We it love you. It don't feel like an interview when it's like No, this, no. You know we're kicking saying? it. You so know what I'm saying? just chilling, you know? That's a discussion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But we love you and definitely love. Hey, when we in, when we back in Vegas, we got to get her to show us where, or in Cali, where the food's at, you know? Because we, we like good food, you oh, know? Yeah. And if you can yeah. cook, we might come by, <laughs> pull up. We'll pull up, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and hang yeah. out, which I ain't run. Uh -huh. But I mean, you know, I've been around oh, a few. You now know we, what can, I'm saying? we can all eat good food, trust me. Trust hey, me. man, thank you so much for coming on the Appreciate show, man. For sure. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. And we have.